Hey, good day to you. This is Todd, and uh, we are continuing our journey. We're, I'm just a regular dude walking in the Word, and today we're continuing going through the book of Mark. We're going to be reading from Mark 4, verses 1 through 20. It's the parable of the sower. All right, the sower, a sower is a farmer. Again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it, on the lake while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge he taught them many things by parables and in his teaching said listen a farmer went out to sow his seed as he was scattering the seed some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up some fell on the rocky places where it did not have much soil it sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow but when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they were withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plant so that they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, some multiplying 30, some 60, and some 100 times. Then Jesus said, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. When he was alone, the twelve and the others around him asked him about the parables. He told them, The secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you. But to those on the outside, everything is said in parables, so that they may be ever seeing but never perceiving, and ever hearing but never understanding. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven. Then Jesus said to them, Don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? The farmer sows the path where the wor word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Others, like the seed sown on the rocky places, hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When the trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Still others, like the seed sown among the thorns, hear the word, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires of other things come in and choke choke the word making it unfruitful others like seed sown on good soil hear the word accept it and produce a crop some 30 some 60 and a hundred times what was sown that's mark 4 verses 1 through 20 you notice in here, um, Jesus, first of all, he goes out uh, to the lake, and we had talked about this before. It was a good uh, way of amplification. I you know, have a microphone so you can hear me, but back in Jesus' day, they didn't have microphones, so um, he went out on the lake and then was in the boat, and then he could teach uh, from there. And he gives this parable about the farmer. Um, the farmer... Uh, is the sower and he with the way you did you sowed seeds back then it was you didn't have a planter you had behind the tractor you uh took the seed in a, in a bag and you carried that bag and you just scattered it uh wherever you know hither and yon and there was it was a gamble you know some of the seed would take off and and be in good soil and others wouldn't um okay so it would be um in in, in the terrain there where Jesus was talking about was rough terrain. It would have mountains in some areas and stuff like that. When I was in Jamaica, they had, um, we went up into Blue Mountain, which had coffee um, growing up there. And it wasn't coffee fields. This coffee was like, you'd be driving along and it was like in the ditches and, and like kind of every place they could stick up a coffee plant, they had it. Um, so you didn't have the coffee fields, you just had a planted wherever and you'd be driving along well there's a coffee plant the coffee plant coffee plant so um in the same way they they were planting seed wherever it would grow and sometimes it would take hold sometimes it wouldn't so uh, and then he he gave this parable but then he helped the disciples understand it because they didn't understand it and so he gave them uh understanding starting at verse 13 where he said don't you understand this parable then how will you understand any parable? So there's five people in this parable. The farmer is the sower, and that represents us. So I have a diagram here uh, today to show this. Um, and this is the farmer. That represents us. We're 
we're called by God to go out and, and scatter the seed wherever we can, okay? We don't know how these people are going to react, but we're called to, to, to scatter the seed. Um, some people are going to accept it and, and, and run with it and, and uh, be fruitful, and others, it won't last. But you're called to scatter, okay? So anyway, so we're the farmer, so that represents us, and he's, he's got his bag of seed. I don't know if you can see it real well, but he's got his seed. So the first one that he talks about is the, the, the person here, and um, we're going to call him Snatched Up Steve. Now, sna Snatched Up Steve, um, and, and I know different people that I, I've, I've ministered to, and I can each person here is a person in, in my mind. Okay, I've, I've, naturally, I've changed their names. Um, but so Snatched Up Steve is one that um, it says when the, the sower scattered the seed, um, the birds of the air, came, it was on rocky uh, soil, or not rocky soil, it was on the path, really. Okay, so I'm uh, out here on a path, and um, sometimes the grass will grow up between the, the uh, path, but mo most times it won't, but it's hard, okay? So the birds come out, and they, they love, you know, if you scatter seed here, they'll come and eat it right up. And that's what happened there to Snatched Up Steve. And Snatched Up Steve... Um, you know, we'd led him to the Lord, and he wasn't a Christian that long, but then um, he wasn't, it, it didn't take root, okay? It was like a, a week later, and you talk to him, you're like, uh, what happened to your walk with the Lord? And he's like, ah, yeah, I, I just, I'm not ready for that right now, you know? And so it, it didn't take root. So that snatched up Steve. The next one is Restless Ricky, and that's this one here. Uh, I'm not, I'm sorry, not Restless Ricky, Rootless Ricky. That talks about the, the seed that was scattered in the rocky uh, soil. And so um, sometimes the seed will take hold in rocky soil, but more often than not, it won't. And so it's, it's hard. And so uh, Rootless Ricky, uh, he didn't have a firm uh, foundation in, in this. And this is sometimes what annoys me is uh, people uh, will just roll into town and um, they'll just throw a salvation message together real quick and, uh, you know, have, you know, it, they'll do a, a little uh, event and uh, have a evangelistic message. And then that's it. You know, they haven't explained the whole gospel. They said, do you want to know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? And um, everyone goes, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. And they, but it, it's, it, it's not a good foundation. It wasn't. They didn't explain that you're a sinner and, and so forth and, and what you need to be saved from and, and all that. So it didn't, it wasn't, it was too hard. It was, didn't take root. So that's Rootless Ricky. He didn't have um, good grounding uh, to start off with. Um, so then the next one is Worried Wilma. Worried Wilma is a, a woman. She was a Christian and um, like you talk to her six months later and uh, she's not walking with the Lord anymore. And you're like, well, what happened? And she's, oh, my family, they didn't like it that I was a Christian. And, um, you know, I, I was doing this stuff and, and my friends didn't like it either. And um, where I went to school, they made fun of me if I was doing that. And so what has happened is the worries of the world has come in and this has like vines wrapped around her. And so those vines have come in and, and choked her out. There's a plant. We have an aloe plant up, up front. We, well, we did have an aloe plant up front. And I had planted that like years ago when we first moved into this house, probably 15 years ago. And um, every time the kids got sunburned, we would just um, I'd tell the kids, you know, go out and get some aloe and you know, smear it over the, the sunburn and that'll help take the, the sting away. So the other day, uh, one of my daughters said uh, she needed some aloe. And I said, well, go out and get some. She went out there and she said, Dad, there's no aloe there. And I'm like, really? Well, that's odd. I, I, you know, I had it. We, it was a big old plant of it. Well, what had happened is this, and I hadn't even noticed it, but there was another plant that we had planted there beside it, and it, it expanded and grew and grew and grew. Well, it grew and it expanded over to where the aloe was and it kind of pushed the aloe out of the way and the aloe doesn't exist anymore. 
this other plant just kind of took it over. It was a little pretty plant, um, but it just, it, it overtook it. There's no aloe, not, not a, a thing of it left. Uh, so um, that's a good example how, you know, the, the cares of this world just kind of pushed out our walk with God um, with the case of worried Wilma. She was concerned about that. And then we have good ground Gary, okay? And that's people that we've ministered to. And they knew what they were getting into and, and following the Lord. And they were like, yeah, I want to do that. They counted the cost uh, before they accepted Christ. And they, then they were discipled along the way. And I encourage you, um, if you're not, well, you should be leading people to the Lord. But if you're not, and also, you should be discipling people too. People need to be discipled rather than just like, oh, you're a Christian now. Oh, that's great. But disciple them, bring them along also. So um, anyway, uh, Good Ground Gary, um, he was uh, saved and then he was discipled and got involved in the church and was active in the church and had other Christians around him to help him grow. So those are the four um, different people and but the thing is what i want you to see today is this we're the farmer we're called to scatter seed to all these people okay and sometimes it's going to take hold and sometimes it won't okay um you know naturally we'd hope that everyone could be the good ground gary um but we don't have uh, control over that sometimes so but i encourage you just to keep on sowing that seed you're the farmer sow that seed uh, to wherever you can Lord's blessing today to you as we continue going through the book of Mark and we'll continue on tomorrow. Thanks for being with us and Lord's blessing to you.